Welcome back to On The Record. Tonight we have very fast company. Jacene Phillips, Olympian, and now promoter of what has to be the hottest track and track cycling festival in this side of the planet, man. Yeah. So one of the things we were talking about just before the break is the fact that we don't have the facilities to hold like a, a World Cup event. Yeah. Um, but this is, is a, at a, a pretty high level of competition. Mm, competition. The, the, would there be, you be getting points for this yeah. kind of event? Uh, no, you won't be getting any points. You know, it's just more entertainment for the people here in Trinidad and Tobago. And it's more for them for seeing our country and what we have to offer to the world. Uh, you know, everyone that comes here love it. You know, they love how, you know, we're so relaxed and how we're so kind people. I mean, because there's no other country that, you know, are bringing in international athletes just to, you know, basically do a showcase, you know what I mean? This is this is the strangest thing because you have international elite and I don't wanna I don't wanna sound like a fanboy here, but it's it have no potongs in this thing. It's only thoroughbreds coming down here. Yeah. You know, this is like the top class sprinters, mm -hmm. uh, fastest cyclists in the world really. Mm -hmm. But they come into line basically because they ain't got no points. Yeah. So, I mean, how, how do you convince a, a top class guy like a, a Gregory Bougie to come down here, Gregory? Last year, last year, you know, the event speak for itself. You know, this year I contacted him and he's just like, yeah, I'm in. I am that. And that's, that's where this festival has reached. You know, everyone, I mean, when I hit the World Cup scene this year, everyone is like, when is it, when is it, when is it? We want to come, we want to come. And usually you have to pay these guys, you know, big sums of money and you just offer them to come to Trinidad and they, they're Don't willing to come. That, I'm telling you, I'm telling yes, you. Yes. No, yeah. I mean, I mean, they love our country. And right. I mean, it makes me feel so proud that, you know, people just want to come here and just see what we have to offer. So. And you're staying at the Hyatt, right? And we're staying at the Hyatt. That, 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 that's nice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. You know, the, the sponsor support, two things that I remarked uh, at last year's festival. Mm. The athlete support yeah. and the sponsor support. Yeah. You all had very strong sponsor support. Mm. And I guess with the two of those things combining, we will eventually start to see much more, more yeah. of the fan support. Mm. But um, one of the questions is the length of the event. Mm. When, when you start to put in all the local races right. and some of the kids' races, yeah. things start to drag on. Yeah. But how do you feel about that mix? in terms of you as an international elite cyclist having to wait to watch the five-year-olds? Um, I mean, it's tough, you know, because, I mean, you still have to give them the opportunity to shine. I mean, I think it motivates them as well, but uh, I don't agree with, you know, my program, but, you know, I have to, to you know, compromise basically with the Cycling Federation because they want to have all the events, you know what I mean, uh, the master events, and it's tough, you know, for professionals because we're not really used to riding same night with the Masters and Category 3 and Category 4 and, you know, the list goes on. But, I mean, we have to accommodate them for now. Hopefully, you know, in the future we could probably change some things and probably have a different day for them and a different day for us. But, I mean, we just have to deal with it for right now and just keep, keep the vibes pumping. But one of the things that you look at, um, when you have a five-year-old cyclist, he had a he mother or father had to bring him home. Usually he whole family coming. Yeah. Right? So that is a big part of the fan base mm -hmm. for, for the actual live event. Yeah. But how do you now extend the reach of the event? How are you planning uh, like yeah. more TV and media? Um, you know, last year, I think, again, you know, it speaks for itself. We just posted up on uh, social media. You know, the, the feedback is going great. Ticket sales are going great. I think it was the cycling is actually selling faster than my, my party. So it was like... Yeah, good. you had a big party yeah. over the weekend, man. How was that? It was great, you know, a good a good thing for the local community. Um, you know, a lot of my Port of Spain friends were nagging because it was so far, but, you know, it's great that they did come down and support me down in Supire, so I'm thankful it's for like that. like a juve thing? Yeah, it was nice. Very yeah. nice. I see it all kind of paint. Yeah. You know, that's the thing, though. You, you're everywhere. You're on Instagram, you're on Twitter, you're on Facebook, and mm -hmm. you use it. Yeah, I do. You, you know? Yeah. So somebody following you on Instagram, somebody yeah. follow you, they get a yeah, lot they, of in, insights get, into what's going on in Jesse and Phillips' life. Yeah, they do. I mean, a lot of people, you know, they, they get to see what I do and how it goes in my life. Because, you know, I'm 
I'm real big on the social media, so I post like everything on Instagram. So it's a cool, cool following. And is it you or you yeah. have somebody tweeting? Um, it's always you? No, nah, no, nah, it's not always me. It's always probably like my friends because I never really have my phone. So they would probably take the picture and just post it. Right. They just be like, this okay to post? I'm like, yeah, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I had to make sure, you know, because nothing can't go up there. That's, you know, you know, you, you know you, how it goes. You live in, when you're in Trinidad, you live down Separa. Yeah. But you're based in LA. Yeah. And you've been based in LA for a while. Yeah, for years. Um, how do you make the switch? Um, it's different, you know. It's, it's it's a different different lifestyle. I think when I'm here, I'm more relaxed. When I'm here, I know that it's more family, more friends, more me time, basically. You know, just hanging out. And when I'm over there, it's more just focus. You know, just because of how the schedule and how the training goes, it's no alignment, no nothing. You know, it's just to the track, to the gym, and home. And um, I like it, you know. So I come to Trinidad three times a year and it's cool. <laughs> and and when you when you out there, it's really all about preparation yeah, for your next thing. Next this time. year started off in yeah, the hospital. Yeah. That was your New Year's Day present. Yep. Yeah. Straight started the year. Off. Hold on, don't talk. <laughs> we, we, we had to get out something. To come back to find out what went on. <laughs> all year's night into New Year's, we're just saying end up rack up in the hospital. Don't go nowhere. We're on the record. 